Access to justice is a central theme in our constitution. In a nutshell, it refers to the ability of members of the public, and especially those who are financially disadvantaged or from marginalized groups, to approach the courts with relative ease and to be able to have their disputes considered and resolved in a fair and just manner. But of the judicial system in Kenya believe that justice eludes the poor, indulges the corrupt, and serves politicians. Do you agree? Does justice elude the poor, indulge the corrupt, and serve politicians? 2242 is our SMS line, and the hashtag is Citizen Extra. Let me know your thoughts. I'll have a team of competent analysts here in studio, advocates of the to have that discussion shortly. Meanwhile, African-based full market research firm TIFA is at this moment releasing a report on devolution in Nairobi, Kisumu, and Mombasa, and residents' views on the performance of their respective governors. A representative from that firm will be joining us in the second hour of the program to talk about the findings. That's an interview you do not want to miss. And finally, at least 52 Palestinians have been killed and 2,400 wounded by Israeli troops. Palestinian officials say on the deadliest day of violence since the 2014 Gaza war. This came on the same day that the USA started operating a small interim embassy inside the existing U.S. consulate building in Jerusalem. Kenya is said to be one of the 33 nations that attended the ceremony of the opening of this U.S. embassy in Jerusalem and will be hosting the deputy ambassador of Israel to Kenya in the third hour to talk about this developing story. Let's now focus on a rather peculiar and worrying incident out of Nyeri County. Uh, Magoto Ward MCA Pauline Wanjera has accused Hakimi Kuyu, Mokoyo rather, counterpart, Anthony Dagita, of physically assaulting her in Arusha, Tanzania. According to Wanjera, who is popularly known as Wamabati, Dagita attacked her in the company of other MCAs after a heated verbal exchange. She further alleged that the male MCA punched her on the face and then followed up with a blow using a bottle, knocking her on the floor. Uh, in an audio clip obtained by Citizen TV, Wanjera says that it's not the first time that Dagita has threatened her. Uh, the Kirimokoyo MCO on phone has, however, denied assaulting Wanjera, saying that he did not even travel to Tanzania as alleged. Dagita is also accused of having removed nominated MCA Beth Nyawera from the chambers alleged, uh, for allegedly skimpy clothes. The county assembly of Nyeri, and those are some of the images you're looking at, has been plagued with gender battles with a section of male MCAs removing their female colleagues from committee leadership. All right, let's get more details about this worrying and peculiar incident from Martin Munene, who is in Nyeri County. Martin, um, it's, it's a he said, she said kind of a, a issue. Tell us a little bit about what's happening in terms of the MC has gone to the police, recorded a statement. Uh, what's the way forward? What can you tell us in terms of this incident? A uh, very good morning to Wahiga Maura, and uh, I am actually outside the County Assembly of Nyeri, uh, where in a short while I will be meeting uh, with the accused, uh, that is uh, MCA and Dagita, uh, who up to now has denied any involvement in that particular incident. I'm not sure if he's going to be changing his statement when we speak. Uh, but uh, he's going to be coming and we're going to be following up uh, on that matter. And maybe a little bit uh, of what has been going on in this particular county assembly. Uh, there has been accusations by uh, a certain uh, members who are actually female saying that there has been deliberate uh, actions by their male counterparts to remove them from uh, committee leaderships. And also uh, they've said that uh, often they have been uh, mistreated by their male counterparts. And now this particular incident happened outside the country and uh, what was going on is that uh, this particular committee had actually gone out uh, for training on budgeting and other financial related uh, you know, training. And what happened is that after uh, their session they went out and is that there was a confrontation. Uh, I must say that these two uh, members are actually elected and uh, uh, most of the uh, MCAs who are female in this county assembly are nominated and so there was, a, there, there was an, ag an argument uh, on uh, what exactly made uh, this particular member of the county assembly uh, that is uh, uh, Paul and so that is where the confrontation started and she says that uh, this particular member attacked her and actually uh, went on to beat her thoroughly uh, but after that she says that she recorded a statement uh, with the police in Tanzania she says actually uh, she was taken to hospital and uh, this particular male uh, MC was taken to a police station 
after that she also said uh, I talked to her on phone and she told us that uh, she was able to record this, a similar statement uh, when she came back to Kenya in other uh, Parklands police station and uh, she's following up on that matter uh, she's also uh, waiting uh, for, 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 for results from the hospital so that uh, she can be able to formally put up against uh, this particular member of the county assembly. But uh, so far, Wahiga, what we can say is that uh, uh, accusations and denials of the same, but I have, we've also been able to speak to another member of the, uh, the county assembly who says that she was actually there. He witnessed what happened, and he says that uh, uh, that incident and therefore we're going to be waiting, Wahiga, to uh, just hear what uh, this particular uh, member of the county assembly of Nyeri, that is Ndagita, is going to be saying. Uh, uh, we, we, we're just going to, you know, listen to, to listen to him, and and you just hear his side of the story, uh, even as we try to put this whole matter in perspective. But Wahiga, there's also a clip which I believe you'll be playing shortly to just uh, give you an insight exactly into what is going on in this county assembly. One member in the house actually said that there has been deliberate efforts to remove uh, women leaders and who are against women leadership in this particular county assembly. And so you can get uh, the genesis of this conflict and this pull and pull, uh, push and pull here. And it is actually, it's not the first time that we are seeing this. Uh, there was also uh, some accusations last year similar to this, where another male MCA was accused of slapping, uh, physically assaulting another female MCA in a separate incident. Back to you, Wahiga. Martin Monene, even if... Uh, that uh, ladies in that um, MCA uh, county assembly are not treated unfairly is not true. Nevertheless, what is worrying is that there is that perception as well, and and sometimes perception is even you know worse than truth. So this is something that uh, the county will definitely need to deal with moving forward. But nevertheless, we we'll wait to get uh, those that you are planning to interview the program to understand this and a very worrying series of affairs uh, in Nyeri County. Well, as I mentioned earlier, we were talking a bit about justice today. It's a central theme in our constitution. But there are those who feel that when we talk matters justice, it eludes the poor, it indulges the corrupt, and serves politicians. And that's the topic we want to get to the studio right now. And before I introduce my guest who is here in the studio, I want to take you now uh, to Colin Shitia by our correspondent out there. This should be in uh, Transoya County. He will be speaking to an, an activist, Kefa Were about the challenges when it comes to uh, accessing justice in that part of the country. Collins, I trust you're in Transoya. What uh, can you tell Yeah, very true, Waiga Maura. I'm in Transoya, Kitale Town. Uh, here in Transoya, Kitale Town, uh, many Kenyans cannot uh, access justice because of lack of knowledge uh, how to access that justice. They don't know how to maneuver and get justice. I'll be talking to Kef one of the activists here in Transoya County who has been assisting locals to follow and get justice here in Transoya County. In Transoya County, most of the people are, uh, they, they, are, they are finding it difficult to get justice uh, because of uh, land issue and uh, marriage issue and violence. I'll be talking to Kefa Were who will, who will explain more about justice here in Transoya County. Mr. Kefa Were, ebu tuambie ni maswala yapi ambaya mawazuia wakazi wa county ya Transoya kutopata yale justice katika eneo hili. Asande. Uh, Transoya, tuna mahakama hapa kitale. Sana sana ukiangalia katika ELC court, uh, gote ambaye anashukulikia mambo ya mashamba, jachi ni mmoja, anashukulikia kesi kutoka kule Turkana, West Pokot na hapa Transoya. Kwa hivyo eneo lake ni kubwa sana. Mpaka sasa hawezi kuhandle kesi zote kwa haraka ambavyo inawezekana licha kwamba na jitahiti. Namba 2 High Court ina jachi mmoja pia ambaye maeneo yake ni makubwa. Ukicha upande wa Law Court ina magistrate sita peke yake na wana handle case zote kutoka katika Transoya County. Chief Justice alikuwa ameelezea kwamba tungekuwa na 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 court kule Kachipora na court nyingine ikakuwa kule Endebes na nyingine Kiminini. Na hata tunapoongea mpaka sasa hakuna court imechekwa Kiminini yameanzishwa Kachipora Endebes. So parklo ya cases iko kubwa sana katika Transoya County kwa sababu ya wale magistrate ambao wana handle hapa wanashughulikia wana eneo kubwa. Cha msingi mno kwamba mahakama pata ijachengwa hapa. Ukienda hata kwa chemba utakuta kwamba magistrate wa, wanafanyia kesi zao kwa chemba. Whereby hawana space, private space whereby wanaweza ku, hata kufanya kuandika uamusi kwa njia ya haraka. Ningeomba kama chief justice angeharakisha kama vile alivyokuwa ametoa hiti kwamba wangechenga mahakama ingine hapa Kitale ingechengwa ili kuharakisha ili magistrate wawe na nafasi ya ya kuhandle cases kwa njia ambayo inahitajika. Na pia utaangalia
ameshikwa kutoka Jeb China analetwa hapa Kitale Kotini na mtu huyu ne, kutoka Jeb China mpaka hapa ni karibu shilingi 400 kwenda na kurudi kwa hivyo pia ina, inafanya wa Kenya wasitafute haki kwa njia ya haraka kwa sababu ya maeneo wanatoka mbali mtu akitoka mahali inaitwa Kajibora ni karibu shilingi pia 400 kufika hapa sasa ningeomba kwamba kama hii kama ya Kitale ingechengwa kule Kachipora kile kiminini na hapo Endebes ingeharakisha watu hawa kufikia haki kwa haraka na pia hapa huyu cha judge ambaye na handle ma case za mashamba ELC court kama wangeweza kupunguza wafungue court kama kule Elodwa na hapa uh, makutano kule West Pokot then cha wetu hapa angekuwa na na uharaka sana urahisi wa kuhandle kesi hapa hebu tuambie wakazi hapa wanajua jinsi ya kufuatilia masuala yao ili kupata haki ah wakazi wengi wa Tanzania wengi mno ni kama asilimia sitini hawajachua sana kufuatilia haki zao sa hapa kotini wengi wakisikia kotu wanaokopa wanaona kama watafungwa lakini kama tunaweza kuelemisha kuwe na civic education wajue kwamba haki ya mkenya yote inapatikania kupitia kwa sheria na hasa koti koti ndiye anaweza kuinterpret haki za wakenya wote kama wakenya wangejua kwamba haki yao iko kotini hawangeokopa kuja kotini Yeah, well, Waiga, as you have heard, uh, about 60% of Transoya residents uh, cannot access justice because they fear coming to court. And also here in Kitale Court, judiciary is understaffed so that making it difficult for Transoya residents to access justice. From Kitale Town in Transoya County, I'm calling Shitia back to you, Waiga Maura. Thank you so much, Colin Shitiabai. Never get tired of the way you say your name in that outro. And of course, uh, thank you for bringing us the weighty issues that are affecting uh, residents of Transoya County when it comes to justice. And that's the discussion we want to have in studio today. Joining me is uh, Harriet Chigai, who's the Vice Chair of the Law Society of Kenya. And we're expecting shortly George Kithi as well to join us. Shortly, I'll give her a chance to respond to what uh, she's heard from Transoya County. But we want to take a look at a report that was recently released, uh, composed or done by the Judiciary Performance Management and Measurement 2016 2017 let's put that up on the screen it's sort of like a judiciary scorecard some of the highlights of that report were that the malindi court of appeal ranked the best performing court attaining an impressive 62 percent reduction in case backlog in addition the supreme court registry under esther nyayaki was recognized as the best court registry countrywide um, we also saw uh, the chief justice saying that there was a significant improvement in court user satisfaction index at 64 percent and an increase in the number of resolved cases at 58%. I've got a lot more to show you, but we'll, we'll, we'll take a break from that for now so that I can give Harriet a chance to respond to all this information coming from different locations. Welcome to the program. First things first. Thank you very much, Wahiga. Good. What has struck you from Transoya, from what I've just shown you as well? What are your thoughts? Uh, well, Wahiga, we must say that uh, there, 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 there are issues in terms of access to justice. For sure they are. But again, we must say that uh, the JSC and the judiciary have really, really tried to, to, to resolve the issues that, um, that are, they are currently affecting the common Manainchi. Mm -hmm. And just like you've heard, uh, one of the biggest problems in this country is poverty. Let's start with that. And um, the, the, judicial, the, the judicial system, you'll agree with me, that once you take a case in, uh, a case in court, you'll realize that most Kenyans are unable to get proper representation, and that's where poverty comes in. And with that, then, we must look at what solutions do we have. Mm. You know, I always say as Kenyans, we are quick to throw jabs, you know, we are quick to, to, to complain. But again, we are the owners of solutions, and we must always provide solutions. And things that we must institutionalize is legal aid. You know, in terms of poverty. You think that will go a long way in, in changing oh, the narrative yes. around access oh, to justice yes. in this country? Oh, yes. If we can institutionalize legal aid cutting across board and have pockets of advocates who can actually be well, um, who can actually some of these cases, especially in, within the counties. And even here in Nairobi, you'll find uh, low cost areas like Madere. Um, Kariobangi, you'll find there's a lot there's a lot of issues, a lot of criminal um, um, cases that are coming up and these people are not able to actually access justice. We must institutionalize legal aid so that um, some of these cases, sorry cases can be taken up. In fact, in many senses, people who should be going to the courts come to the media. Yes. Said because I guess they feel the media will not charge me a quote unquote an arm and a leg to air my story but by the time I get a lawyer and go through the whole process, I have, I'm, I'm worried I might not get my or, or 
get justice and, and that sort of thing. Exactly. And, and that's the starting point, you know. How can we institutionalize legal aid for us to be able to serve all Kenyans cutting across board? So that is one thing that we must all look at. And even as Wakilis, it's something that um, we need to come up with a more robust service. Um, and we have it institutionalized. Currently, you know, the AG houses the pro bono service. And um, in my view, if it can be taken under the judiciary, so that it's, it's a robust system which and it flows uh, we'll be able to handle it at a very uh, different level administrative wise and even reporting the cases up to conclusion okay. and the systematic movement of these cases um the mm. other issue as you've seen um they are complaining about is um judicial officers uh, one thing i must say that is a big issue because the population of this country is growing and as the population 40, 45 grows... 45 million exactly. and growing, that's right. You can imagine 45 million, a population of 45 million, with about 14 to 36 high court judges. Um, previously, we had about four court of appeals. No, one. Currently, we have about four, yes, which are now right. being put in place. They are still not enough. We are talking about 40, 40 million plus human beings in Kenya. So you realize that this is an area that uh, we actually need to think about, but also we must give credit to JSC. In the last four, five, six years, we've seen tremendous improvement in terms of um, the increase in the judicial officers. I believe currently we have, um, we used to have about 14 um, high court judges. That number has tremendously grown to about 36. We need it to grow. You know, we need it to grow further so that we can be able to at least cater for almost everybody. F fair enough. I'll yes. cut you there because we are coming to the solutions part, but I wanted us to take a look at one or two other things. Before that, let me read an SMS that's coming, and you can share your thoughts on where Kenya fails in terms of barriers to justice, or access to justice, rather. Let me, let me read this SMS <coughs> from Kagwa in Roy. He says, our judiciary serves only the rich and influential in this country. Uh, can you imagine a Mama Pima, and uh, Harriet, I hope you're listening to this, walking to a local court and obtaining an order stopping the police and chief for arresting her for allegedly selling Changa. A, a tipsy rich man drives to court and obtains an order stopping police from doing their work. So we see it for the rich man, but for the poor person, we don't see that happening, and that's one of the concerns. But let's get into specifics. Uh, in 2014, the EACC did a survey called the Study on Corruption and Ethics in the Judicial, and they came in the judicial sector, and they came up with some other interesting findings. Let's, I want us to take a look at them one by one and then get the thoughts of my guests here in studio. And of course, if you have questions for my guests as well, 22422 is our SMS line. So let's get into specifics now. The court users reported that there were delays in delivery of judgment, documents pertaining cases disappeared, and that there was or there were variants in sentencing. Harriet, does this look familiar? Is this strange? Or are these things that you've encountered you know, as you practice? Well, this is a report that was done after robust research. And, um, and four years have passed since, since so I'm, I'm also curious to know from you whether this has, this has changed. Yeah, and I think there's tremendous improvement, just like I've told you, and you've seen even the report in terms of uh, the deliverables from the judiciary. They've actually reported that there's a lot of improvement in terms of clearing of backlog. But again, this case is still there. They've not cleared them. They are still there, and something still needs to be done. And uh, you'll also realize that... Um, for us to be able to work and deliver this particular issue, we need to embrace quite a number of things, including ICT. You know, we need to stop having paper files. We need to that familiar image of, of lawyers, advocates having big it, files. I know it looks to good to carry the big files, but it's high time we embrace innovation and technology. Okay. Because once we have all these documents well recorded, well registered, then it will not be easy just to pluck a document and court files disappearing because we have a system of logging in and uh, being accountable for each and every case that comes or re each and every case that actually appears in court. So those are some of the things that we must look at. And you know, human being is to error. You know, the question is, if it's an element of corruption, then what measures are we putting in place, in place to right. ensure that we minimize that's right. This uh, levels of corruption. The other thing is the time that we spend in the court registries, even for us Wakilis, you know, if we can have a robust system that is able to serve us, then you'll realize you'll save on time, and time saved is equated to money. Money to money. And let, let, me, so let me also bring in another advo an advocate of the high court, 
and Kithi, who joins us now. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much, Wakili. Let me get, I don't know if you've had a chance to look at uh, some of the graphics that we are showing, and I want to pick up on another one as well. Let's take a look at the next one. Pa I've, I've picked snippets of uh, uh, this 2014 report, the EACC study on corruption and ethics in, judicial, in the judicial sector. So they also asked officers in the judicial system issues are ignorance of litigants, shortage of staff, corruption. So even the officers are saying there's corruption, case backlogs, bureaucracy as major, you no, know, these are some of the major problems in the judicial yeah. system. George, you can now uh, give us your opening statement uh, <laughs> as we talk about barriers to justice in this country. Uh, look, look at it this way. Uh, corruption is manifested in the, in, the, in the Kenyan mind as giving out money so that then you are given a favorable decision. Mm -hmm. Th that's really uh, the common understanding of what corruption really is. That's a very small segment of what corruption really is. You know why? It's because um, ultimately those magistrates and judges who receive money are very few. I'll attest to that. They're very few on account of that it is not every person who comes to court. Do you was know who the they are? Well, <laughs> we, we, we don't know, but we know it oh, happens. Okay. But okay. sometimes we get to know from our clients what what. on. But they're very few. I'll tell you why. It is because it is not everyone who comes to court has an opportunity for contact or knowing somebody who knows the judicial officer and also who has the money to spend to that extent. Mm. So to that extent, then the possibilities of justice taking place, unless a litigant interferes, the very few judicial officers I can tell you who will say, go and talk to that man, let him give me money, I give him a favorable decision. No. It is the litigant <coughs> who takes an active role mm -hmm. to try and make contact so that then he pays money so that the decision is in favor. Now, relationships. That seems to be the biggest, biggest problem. You know, people get into this position through people. But For instance, especially, officers? yes, yes, okay. Okay. especially judges. You know, initially, it is the president who used to appoint judges. And you have to know a minister and so on and so forth. What we did with the new constitution, we put an institution called the Judicial Service Commission. Inside there, there are also classmates. <laughs> Inside there, there are relatives. There's an ethnic aspect to it and everything. That, I think, is the of corruption. You see, because when a person gets in there without the merit to be in there, except or that, if they know that he, they he is beholden. Yes, also. he's mm -hmm. beholden to someone yes. in a position who took him there. And unfortunately, these people then um, go about their business within the course corridor for instance, of law. Then it means all matters that come before the judges for a panel of judges of 9, of 19, of 25 spread all over the country will have then to administer a favorable thought, not necessarily a decision, but a favorable thought towards handling the matter. Many small things give advantage to a person, not necessarily the final decision. You see, as a practicing lawyer, it is very, very easy to get small favorable things. That for instance, for instance, in you, may, you may ultimately lose the case. But if your clients just need time to pay up something, mm -hmm. you just need that time. That's what, that's what your client will want. Delay. Not, yes, the delay. See, an adjournment could be for the next 18 months, could be for nine months. That in itself is injustice. Mm. But you see, you won't be able to read it out. In fact, the person may end up being ordered to pay up what needs to be paid. But you see, because of the time that has been borrowed That's right. through the relationship, it becomes a deeper corrupt practice, which is then is not overt for the public to see. So it's not necessarily the exchange of money. That's just so one the, part. There are many of, other facets of, of corruption. Had but, but, but let me put this her head quite vigorously. You see, you see <laughs> for a lawyer, a lawyer is never trained on the facets of corruption. Never. Is that a, that's a, a I think there's a problem a, because you see, this is, this is a guy who is 24 years, has gotten into the profession at 25 or 26 after training, and comes in with a perception of a moneyed profession. So then all you need is to look for the money, which is okay. But you see, when you're taught the do's and the don'ts within the concept of corruption, because mm -hmm. all we are taught is professional ethics. Your clients should be treated like this. Do not take clients, money, and, on, and so on and so forth. But we are not taught the concept of corruption. Now, some of us who are then grown in the profession mm -hmm. understand the areas and the 
navigate your way through yeah, the profession. Yeah, but then mm-hmm. the advocate who comes does not know what then the boundaries and the and the areas of corrupt or corruption will be. Mm-hmm. I say this because I know that even in the other professions, be it architects, be it who and who, are never taught. Journalism. What we call, yes, <laughs> even journalism, we are never called the common... I just threw it in there as well. That's true. Yes. So that those common causes which again are taught in first year, in second year, and in other areas, which is about the ethical aspect. Ethical aspects, for instance, in journalism, have do's and don'ts that are restricted to the closeness and proximity the, to the profession, as opposed to the wider area of the social aspect which is corruption and therefore if we need to deal professionally with corruption there must be must be mm. a deliberate effort to teach it on what needs to be done and what need not be done let me allow your vice chair here to respond to that what are your thoughts on what he said um well that is very true and um i'll tell you for a fact um what happens is you find it's the need within the profession it's the need to get quick money you know Quick money, come easy, go easy. And um, the question then is, the more you need or the more you get, the, the more, more you want, <laughs> you know? And when you go to the system of um, getting eased easy, no one wants to work hard, you know? Mm. But at the end of the day, we are watering down all the professional institutions, completely, all of them. Be it, and it cuts across board, mm-hmm. you know? Within the accounting sector, within the financial sector, within um, uh, we, 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 within uh, the construction sector, you now see NCA has stopped constructions within for the next so many months. I don't know how they got into that, but it's simple corruption. It's it's a cancer. It's a cancer that needs now. We need to now start cutting it and ensuring that we stealing the loopholes. The question is how. So. Even with the cases that appear in court, the corruption element of it starts from various institutions. If it's a construction matter, the advocate is just one of them. Mm-hmm. There are various other persons involved with that case who could have been compromised in one way or another before even the case comes to court. Then we have the advocate who has now to finalize. And then you still have the judicial officer. So corruption is one of those that um, we need, we strongly need to condemn. And it's something that the society as a whole needs to start thinking of how can this thing, how can this cancer be managed? Again, someone's told me that you cannot finish corruption, but how can it be managed? You know, <laughs> how can it be managed? That is, that is actually so, very worrying. Yeah, it's very yes, worrying, yes, but that. it's the truth. And then you'll also realize that confusion, corruption really works around confusion. You know, the and more people use and ignorance. Have knowledge, then, then it's easier to, to, to exactly. so take away their rights, for example. Yes. Exactly. So it's quick. It's a quick fix, you know shortcuts here and there for you to get what you want at the end of the day. Fair, fair, fair enough. Let's yeah. continue to take a look at the report and the questions that I'm getting in are a lot of them are following a particular trend which I'll pose to you. So let's take a look at the next uh, page on that report. This is the 2014 ESCC study on corruption and ethics. Interestingly, officers in the judicial system stated that courts were located far. I don't know if this is something that has come up you know, as, as you've been in this profession. Court services were costly. Persons living with disabilities were not catered for, 21% thus hindering access to court services. And this report had a lot. I've just tried to pick some of the highlights. So even distance to the courts, cost of justice, or, or, or cost of hiring a lawyer, and you've brought up the issue of legal aid, uh, are some of the issues that were raised by judicial officers. But let me read these SMSs now, because they seem to be following a particular trend. Uh, Indiazi Agade is asking, why are your panelists dodging the question of the judiciary serving the money? Uh, and someone else here, Morris from Roy says, morning, only the rich are able to buy justice in Kenya. No need to go to court in Kenya, no justice for poor, for the poor, and no rich person in Kenya's prisons. So I'm trying to broaden the discussion, but the viewers watching are saying, you need to talk about those with the money and, and how it's almost automatic that once you have the money, you'll get justice for yourself, quote unquote. But if you don't have the money, it doesn't matter uh, how the facts are in your favor, you're not going to get justice. George, let me, let me start with you. Well, that, that's, that, that's, I think, is correct contextually, and I'll explain. Uh, I think if you appeared in a local court, you know, where wazes are, the liberties there are different. Because you see, you talk in a language that you all understand. The evidence presented is from, you know, the local environment, probably the location. So it's about how you destroyed maize, 
to a cow's stole entered. Stole someone's cow. Yes, uh -huh. stole someone's cow. You see, the facts are presented differently. You know, the problem with system is that it makes everything, it puts everything into pigeonholes. So then you must do as is follows. So justice is packaged in a system. It is not where liberty is unconstrained on how you present yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the profession of law. You see, when you appear in court, you appear with certain mannerism and expectations, completely set out and cast in stone. So then you don't present a court in a certain different way and expect it to be heard. No, you must be constrained to the paperwork as is, um, as is, 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 uh, said in law. For instance, if you have to start with, let me go technical, a plaint in place of what you call a petition or so on, or an application, because you must be admitted to the process of being heard in a certain constrained mm -hmm. way. Who does that? Is a person who has the knowledge to law. Mm -hmm. And who is that person? Is a lawyer. Mm -hmm. So who employs <coughs> a lawyer, a person who has the money to do so? Anyway, if we talk of legal aid, where is the liberty to do legal aid? I will do legal aid, but of course the very few little percentage of what I can offer for free because I must exist as a professional. You see, then if you look at the sum total of who has access to justice, it's a person who has the monetary capability, the financial capability to access justice. By the way, why is it that we go to court and we pay money for that? Why? I thought it's a service given by government to the people of Kenya. Why is it it's in fact, why in is it in fact that the government does not pay fees in court? Why is it that the county governments don't pay fees in court? Mm -hmm. Why is it that an equal party like the Attorney General, in fact, doesn't pay fees when he comes to court? It's because that is the party, the government. Why is government excused and it is an equal party before court? What it means is that by the mere fact that we have to pay to access justice in itself, mm. means access to justice has become, has a financial implication to it. I can't file a case until I have money. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the law provides that you can go to court, court and plea, or plead that you are a pauper. You go through a rigorous process of examination and investigation as to whether to you in fact have no money or not. <laughs> what is not having money? If you have chicken, if you have a goat, you can sell the goat to come to court. Why would I go sell a goat to come to court when in fact that's the only asset I have? Yet, yet in the context of who a pauper is, that's in fact is an asset. So why not sell your asset to come uh, mm. to court? Is justice cheap or expensive? It is expensive to that extent. By the way, 70,000 to a rich man, a billionaire is very little. A drop in the ocean. In fact, people drink 100,000 in a night. So it will be nothing to that person. But to the villager who cannot pay 15,000 school fees mm -hmm. for the child mm -hmm. because he has to sell that goat, telling to sell the goat to come and sue someone, 70,000 for a land, a land dispute won't do it because, maybe the land is worth because it's even. a process of further impoverishment. Now, what then needs to be done contextually? I do think mm -hmm. that then the categories of who can be admitted into pauperism that scheme has to be enlarged. It to be broadened. And then the strictness as to that admission also has to be enlarged on account okay. of the fact that we cannot go to court until we have money to pay the fees for Fair it. enough. Let me, let me bring in Harriet. Part of your campaigns, uh, was it earlier this year? I'm sure access to justice came up as part of what you are, and of course you are speaking to your fellow colleagues in the profession, but I'm sure that is a big discussion. What do you think bodies like yours, like LSK, can do to make uh, access to justice easier? Because it seems the money discussion is, is the overriding one in, in, in this particular interview today. Um, yeah, remember I started by saying that one, one key element that hinders access to justice is poverty. That's it. You know, it's one of them. In terms of going forward, what can we do? I mentioned the element of legal aid. How can we institutionalize legal aid for it to, uh, for us to be able to, to, to reach out to the common Mwananchi, you know? How can, and it's not even LSK alone. We have so many institutions out there that review how legal aid is conducted. We need to review because at the end of the day, advocates must be paid. So can we have partnerships where can we get partnerships, these partners who can come on board and assist all the institutions who are interested in um, advancing legal aid?
proper structures in place mm -hmm. so that even if the whole idea is pro bono services, the advocate must be paid. Remember, the legal service, in as much as we want to give to the society, you cannot give all your office work and time to the society. You can take a portion of it, you know. So we need to institutionalize legal even as the society we have a pool of advocates who can actually handle legal aid and they are there and they need to be remunerated because currently it's free service for all so that is one key element that must be done and uh, we also need to work very closely with the judiciary um, for that to be done all is for members of the public and even uh, our litigants to embrace other modules of accessing justice let us not cloud the courts with small matters there are matters which can actually be arbitrated there are matters which we can take them through the mediation channel we don't and, need and, to and take so, so how does someone access those channels they just go to the court and say it's justice but i don't do it this way how how does that happen so someone's watching today and thinking okay that arbitration sounds interesting how do they go about it um currently the um, we we have the mediation program that is going on the court annex mediation it's a new program that has been put in place and as we speak right now we have about 500 to 600 registered mediators but that's something that needs to be broadened and i'll tell you for sure amongst the reports that you have you'll realize the clogging of courts or rather the matters which the courts which have um, managed to expense some of those matters like in a very Malindi, for example. Uh, yes yeah, they, they have actually uh, tried mediation you know and some of these family matters children matters you know some of these cases can actually be handled outside the the the, the usual litigation channel and by that we'll be able to free the courts number one number two you'll have a forum where you discuss and uh, resolve conflicts in a very amicable way you know the process is very vicious and annoying and can usurp <laughs> a lot of energy i like the and use of the word annoying <laughs> <laughs> and can make both parties very angry okay you know so there are other avenues that we can take up these matters resolve conflict in a very amicable manner and i would urge the common one in chi let us um embrace let us embrace all these other avenues. And even for the professions, the lawyers out there, these are new areas of practice that we must embrace. And uh, with that, I'm sure we'll be able to deal with a lot of these matters. Fair, you know, fair yeah. enough. Uh, in yeah. the interest of time, I think let's just look at the remaining graphics and then I'll get final comments from my guests here in studio. Uh, let's have them on uh, screen now. Okay, so these are some of the I other issues that came up in that report. Court users, users mentioned constraints to accessing justice as court processes being too long. Postponement of hearing, 54% felt this was a concern. And distance to the court, that has also come up again. Okay. Let's take a look at the next one. The officers in the judicial system acknowledge the practice of payment of bribes to hide files. And you talked about technology to reduce that. And of course, abuse of office, 24%. I know this is a lot of information, but uh, it, it, it is what uh, bribing of judges, prosecutors, and clerks for favorable judgment, 19%, as forms of corruption encountered in the sector. I don't know if we're able to skip to the graphic, which is on solutions that were in that particular report. Remember, this was back in 2014. Four years have passed. I don't know what you at home feels. Okay, so these are recommendations, and I want to get your thoughts on this. A sector-wide approach towards eradicating corruption and unethical conduct should be adapted. Enhanced interagency collaboration and capacity building. Adequate training of judicial officers also came up. Organize more open days to allow for public interaction. And I believe what we are doing right now is sort of like an open day, but, you know, on TV. <laughs> Enforce laws to eradicate corruption and unethical practices. And finally, judicial sector should put emphasis on corruption prevention. Let me get your final thoughts on this in terms of the recommendations. Um, and George, let me start with you. You know, um, the problems are known, have always been known. So there's no surprises yes, from what yes, you guys yes, are yes, looking yes. at. The solutions are known, have always <laughs> been known. So where's the problem? The problem is with the Kenyan. You know, when you come to court, you come to seek justice. However, for a Kenyan, when you go to court, you go to defeat the other. Now, those are two different <laughs> things. You know, justice is not necessarily for you to win in your own way. To win will be if you've been sued, then the cases, if you sued, have it your way. And by the way, world over, lawyers will submit themselves to enhance the, their, their chances of their clients to be able to have it the way they would have been instructed, all right? Because that's how you build your name as but, a lawyer. But there are ways <laughs> in which courts have been decentralized. In fact, 
all over. Most sectors have tribunals. Environment has tribunals, um, intellectual property. There are so many tribunals out there, which are supposed to take away part of the load of the court systems. What happens is then the national, national psych centralizes the court system back to the courts. Remember, going to court is your right. Nobody can deny you that right. Mm -hmm. And the first option to deal with a person is take him to court. Yet, alternatives are available. How do we do this? Is the marketing aspect for the Kenyan to agree that what is alternative better stands a chance of justice than what is that needs to be the overriding message this year. Yes. You know, sort of so so we should then be able to market the, the, the variables into the justice system and tell Kenyans, continue and persistently tell them that you have this advantage with this alternative in mediation. Today, we talk of a mediation uh, platform, pilot project that has been done. Very few Kenyans in Mandera, in Homer Bay, That's right. in Kilifi, mm -hmm. in wherever, do not know. I mean... No, very few would embrace it because it has not been properly marketed. Who does that? It's supposed to be a deliberate effort by government to force to see that although it's a long term, it must be marketed to. In fact, emphasis put there. Just like tree planting today is the main <laughs> issue. Mediation. And you have can seen be the marketing yes. around that. So, in the so present it's very and, easy. You know, taken this very you personally. know, we will continue to have these reports every year, year in, year out, and every cycle. But you know the problem is we know the problems. We know the solutions. Mm -hmm. But who is going to act in order to implement the synergy that has been proposed has to be embraced by the Kenyan. You can't do it in official dome, in your armchair, and theorize over it. You must actually work with the Kenyan. I think there's a disconnect between the litigants, the Kenyans in this country, and the actors because there's no communication. Fair, fair enough. Harriet, before I allow you to your last point let me read a couple of sms's here and one is actually a question someone has mentioned an assistant chief of an area i'm not sure which county who they claim has senselessly beaten their son without any crime done by the boy how can i get a lawyer i don't have the money but i've taken the court to the, the case to the police though no arrest has been made or well, this is in kisumu county so would the alternative methods work in this case or is this straight to the court sort of matter uh well the good thing is they actually know the 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 the, the culprits you but know. they say it's, it's almost as if they and, can't have, they don't um, feel like they can afford a lawyer. And that's a criminal that's a criminal case. That's a case that it's up to the police officers to once you report such a case to the to the police, the next thing is the police needs to go and arrest this person. You know? So again, it's an element of ignorance. You know, if if the common monarchy is well versed with their rights, if the common monarchy is well versed even with the criminal system, then it then means to 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 progress in terms of their issues this is an element that this is a case that he has already reported the question and then is nothing has happened what next what next yeah. yeah when was it reported where are they where is he you know because if you bring a lawyer in such a case this lawyer what is the work of the lawyer i will not represent you as the complainant the lawyer will watch your brief. The best the lawyer will do is advise you mm -hmm. and move you from one point to the, to the next. But that's a case that the government has to take it up. So the question then is, and it's the same thing, the report has pointed, that do we have resources? You know, the judicial, the, 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 um, the justice system is not the judiciary alone. Just like I said, it's there a whole players. chain. Mm -hmm. There are many players mm -hmm. up to the last um um recourse it's a it's a whole chain of it and this is a criminal issue and for this particular um uh, complainant he actually needs to to get legal advice for okay. sure on how okay. to progress and all that who's the police officer who's taken that case up you know and being in the village there are also other avenues you can start even with your chief and, and, and try and see if you, get, if you get justice in that end. You know, from there. Yes. Ca can it be resolved? What are these issues? What are they fighting over? You know? Again, within the um, local setups, some of this crisis can be avoided. You know, I always say, by the time you get into a confrontation situation whereby you fight each other, there are various players within that scenario. Does it then mean us as Kenyans or us as human beings cannot cohabit? We can you know, be what are the to. factors mm -hmm. that are causing all this friction, you know, day and night, be it in your office, be it wherever you're going. When you're driving out there, you do one small thing, someone has insulted you. What is it with this environment that is causing a lot of friction that um, any small thing you do, this 
upon your face, mm -hmm. you know. So we need to take a back seat, rather, as human beings, and and agree how do we want to live in this planet Earth. Then from there, how do we resolve our conflicts? You know, how do we move on? How do we minimize these conflicts within this society? So for me, there's a lot that can be done. It's not even about the judicial system alone. There are a lot of players uh, who needs to come on board. And um, only then can we move forward, you know? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of players. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, as we wrap up this discussion, let me read the last uh, SMSs. Uh, thank you so much to you, George, Kithi, and Harriet Chigai for joining me. Uh, someone says here, Tanzania is better in terms of access to justice than Kenya because there they use Kiswahili, which is understood by the prosecutor, the judge, the accused, the so. accuser, and the witness. They feel the language is, a, is, is what helps. George Keith is nodding his head. He says no. no. Uh, <laughs> someone else says if you have money and you refuse to pay, then all these institutions work together against you to punish you for not with the corruption. Someone else is saying, is it normal to have a mention after judgment, and they've given a certain number there, after waiting for 15 years, so a delay, um, That's and, crazy. and That's then one bad. other person says, mm -hmm. why is there corruption in the police? Why is there corruption in the judiciary? Why is there corruption in the, uh, with the investigators? Tell us how we can get justice and at the same time deal with the above realities. So you've said, both of you, it's getting better, but still a long a way to go, I, I guess, yeah. is the message. And I wish I had someone from the uh, judicial sector. Let, let me just add this. Briefly, uh, please. Yes. Yeah. It is for you to demand your rights. And you so don't, keep, yes. Keep Yes, yes. You must demand your rights. There's no other way. You're turning Kenyans into activists now. Yes, they have to be. In as far as justice is concerned, make your demands. That's all. That's all I advise the Kenyan. You must demand and it must be done because that is your right. I think that's a good place to wrap up this discussion. I hope that's helped some of you who are sending us these questions. And there are a lot more which can show you, you know, Kenyans really are having challenges in terms of access to justice. And I think you now know part of what you'll share with the, the remaining uh, part of the council next time you meet them, that uh, these are the challenges Kenyans are facing, which we all know, and, and, and of course, what are some of the solutions as well. Thank you so much. I was George Keithy, an advocate of the High Court. And I